Through the Looking Glass, Part 1, Chapter 11, Surprise Visit. Wade was sitting at his desk finishing up some paperwork. Right now, he was the only one in the office. He said just go home and Lieutenant Jackson was out doing the evening patrol. The past week has really been a roller coaster for him. Bonding with Shadow has been an experience that Wade never expected, but would also never change. Each day he learned something new about the kid. He can't say it's been super easy. But thanks to Wade's therapist, he's gained some pretty good ways to help Shadow deal with his feelings. The hardest part has been learning how to help him calm down after panic attacks. Being there for him and just being something to help ground him has been helpful. But Wade always notices how his hands still shake even after he's calmed down. Which is why Wade bought Shadow a special gift during his shift today. Music seemed to always calm the kid down. Wade thought that maybe giving the kid his own way of listening to music without relying on Wade's radio at home or the car radio might help. After eating lunch with Shadow, Wade stopped by the thrift shop. Wade didn't really have the money to get the kid a phone, but that was okay. Something more tactical is probably better. After a bit of looking, he found a personal CD player in pretty decent shape. Wade decided to buy it and cleaned it up at the station. Yesterday, he bought some headphones and they are currently sitting in his desk drawer. He made Shadow his own mixtape full of all the songs Wade knew he liked as of right now. It just felt really nice to do something for the kid. Shadow may not know it, but he really changed Wade's life. Lost in thought, Wade didn't notice the door open until a voice rang through the air. Glad to see the station is intact. Tom! Wade went over to give his best friend a hug. Welcome back, man. Glad to be back. So how was the trip? Wade waited for Tom to answer, but it never came as a blue blur came into view. It was so much fun. We got to go on this huge roller coaster. It was so fast. Knuckles almost threw up. Wade watched as Sonic rambled. No, I did not. So are you all here? Yeah, the boys were eager to tell you about everything. Just as he was about to say something, Maddie and Tails entered the station as well. It was nice to see everyone. He truly did miss the boys and their shenanigans. And just talking to Tom and Maddie. All six of them gathered around Tom's desk and just talked. After a while, the boys wandered off and the adults were alone. So did anything exciting happen while we were gone? Wade paused. What was he supposed to say? Oh yeah, a hedgehog showed up at my doorstep after running away from a government facility where he was created and held captive. No, nothing much. Wade rubbed the back of his neck. His tone must have not been convincing because the two of them gave him a look. Okay, Whipple, spill. What happened? Wade knew they weren't going to believe him if he lied. But maybe for Shadow's privacy, he could spare some truth. Well, a kid has been staying with me for a bit and probably will till he wants to leave. You've been watching over a kid and they're okay? Tom corked his eyebrow. Maddie hit his arm at the question. Ignore that, Wade. So, how's that happen? Wade was grateful for Maddie. She really helped ease his stress. Well, he just turned up at my doorstep, literally. Wade rubbed the back of his neck again. He watched as the couple turned to look at each other, and then looked back to him. Okay, so what's the per you aren't telling us? Wade gulped. Was he really that easy to see through? He's a hedgehog. Are, Are you serious? serious? Yeah. Wade said, trying to hide from their glance. Luckily, he was saved by everyone's favorite blue blur rushing toward them. Wade, someone's on the phone for you. They threatened me, so be careful. Sonic said like it was no big deal. At the use of the word threatened, all the adults were on edge and ran to the phone. Wade sat in his chair and picked up the phone. Hello? Who is this? His voice was serious, or at least as serious as Wade could sound. Wade? Wade was going to respond, but the kid started rambling. Are you okay? Who answered the phone? Why didn't you answer the phone? Why aren't you home? Is something wrong? Did Gun capture you? Are they torturing you? Whoa, whoa, kid. Breathe. 
Everything is fine. Just rang a bit late, I promise. Wade could feel the stares he was getting. Who answered the phone then? I'll explain everything when I get to the house, okay? Wade could tell Shadow was hesitant. He had every right to be. Okay, you promise? I promise. After the confirmation, the two said goodbye and hung up. Wade looked up to see the whole Witch Husky family looking at him. Was that him? Yeah, it was. Tom and Maddie nodded their heads, but the boys just looked more confused. Who's him? Tails asked, snuggling into Maddie's leg. The adults looked at each other, neither sure what to say. Ultimately, it was up to Wade, but it was nice knowing his friends had his back. Deciding to tell the boys, Wade looked directly at them. Well, it's a pretty short story, but while you guys were gone, a kid like you guys showed up at my doorstep, and he's been staying with me. Like us? Well, he's a hedgehog. The silence that followed was unexpected and awkward. Wade thought that at least Sonic would be excited to hear the news. Another hedgehog just like him lived in Green Hills now? Is he anatomy? Was the first thing Knuckles asked, which was understandable. For him, it was really black and white. Only enemies were friends. Wade was going to answer, but Sonic got in first. Of course he is. Friends don't threaten people. But Sonic, he can't be sure of that. Don't care. I don't think he's safe to be around. The hedgehog crossed his arms. You are scared. Just because Wade trusts him doesn't mean we should. Wade wasn't sure how to feel about Shadow being called the enemy. They haven't even met the kid yet. You just have to meet him. I promise he isn't an enemy. Wade tried his best to sound serious and sincere. He watched as the Wachowski family took in his words. After all they've been through, he understands why they could be a bit apprehensive. Plus, Wade is pretty trustful, so he gets why they might think he's being manipulated. But Shadow is a good kid. They just need to see it. Maddie was the first to speak. What's the kid's name? It's Shadow. Well, you and Shadow are welcome to dinner anytime, okay? Family is family. The other Wachowskis didn't do or say much, but Wade was happy he had Maddie on his side. Thanks, Maddie. Wade looked up at the clock and stood up. Well, I really have to go. See you later. He grabbed his stuff and headed out to the car. On his drive back, he let out a huge sigh. That was nerve-wracking. Hopefully, they'll warm up to Shadow. Once he stepped into the house, present in hand, he was immediately greeted by a tight hug from the red and black hedgehog. Wade placed the present down and returned the hug. What happened? Shadow asked as he removed his head from the crook of Wade's neck. Wade walked over to the couch and sat down with Shadow still wrapped around him. Remember my friend I was talking about the other day? You mean Tom? Yep. Well, he and his family were turned to town today. They stopped by to say hi and I lost track of time. Who was the one that answered the phone? Sonic, one of their kids. There? Oh, Tom has a wife named Maddie. You'll like her. She's very nice. If you say so. The house was silent for a bit. I'm sorry. Wade pulled Shadow a little closer. For what? For making you worry. I never meant to do that. What's that thing you left by the door? Wade lit up at the reminder of the gifts he got. Oh, I got you something. Wade released his hold on Shadow and stood up. He saw the kid frown at the lack of touch, but Wade hoped the present would cheer him up a bit. Wade walked over to the door and picked up the present. He handed the present to Shadow with a big smile on his face. He watched as Shadow took the present and looked at it. What am I supposed to do with it? You open it. Just take the tissue paper out and the gift will be underneath. Shadow carefully took the paper out and grabbed the gifts underneath. It's like the radio in my room, but smaller so you can carry it around. Really? Yeah, and it's all yours. No one else's, just yours. The smile on Shadow's face was worth every penny. He watched as he picked up the mixtape and looked at it. What music is this? It's a mixtape. I took songs I know you like and songs that I think you'll like and put them on a CD. Just for you. The track list is on the back. Shadow placed the items on the couch and before Wade knew it, the kid was giving him another big hug. There's more, kiddo. Keep looking. He watched as Shadow walked back over to the back on the couch. He reached inside and pulled out the pair of headphones. What are these for? They're for when you want to listen to music without anyone else hearing. You just put them on your ears and plug this end into the CD player. Can I try it out? 
His question was innocent, but it hurt a little that Shadow felt that he had to ask to use something that was bought especially for him. Yeah, buddy, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. Wade happily watched as the kid enjoyed his present. He knows it doesn't make up for the scare he gave the kid today, but he was glad to no longer see a frown on his face.